Our 2015 Gold Medal Award winner is a man of great integrity, passion, and commitment who exemplifies the key qualities of a leader with the vision necessary to navigate rapidly shifting healthcare landscape. Kevin Lofton began his career in 1976 as a staff assistant in the Office of Admissions at Harvard Medical School in Boston. And it was there that the healthcare bug bit him. Two years later, he accepted the position of administrative resident at Memorial Medical Center in Corpus Christi, Texas. And in 1979, he joined the University Medical Center in Jacksonville, Florida, where he served for 11 years, leaving there as executive vice president and COO. In 1990, Kevin took on the position of executive director and CEO of the financially struggling Howard University in Washington, DC. His work then caught the eye of the University of Alabama in Birmingham, where in 1993, Kevin was named executive director and CEO. In 1998, Colorado-based Catholic Health Initiatives hired Kevin as a group president in its Louisville, Kentucky office and as president of the Southeast region in Nazareth, Kentucky. The following year, he was promoted to executive vice president and COO, and in 2003, he was named to his current position as the organization's CEO. He also serves as vice president of Catholic Healthcare Federation, CHI's public church entity. You can read about Kevin's many accomplishments in your program, but some of the highlights are as follows. His long-running tenure at Catholic Health Initiatives is underscored by the significant improvement in size, quality, models of care for a healthcare system that now ranks as the second largest faith-based system in the United States. Under Kevin's leadership, the organization grew from 63 acute care hospitals to 105 with more than $15 billion in revenue. Population health management is an ongoing challenge for the healthcare field, as we all know. But Kevin has been guiding Catholic Health Initiatives to live its mission for many years through a variety of programs benefiting the numerous communities it serves across the country. And long before the Affordable Care Act was passed, Kevin was leading Catholic Health Initiatives to, to create a strong, clinically integrated network, promoting the kind of coordinated care that really makes a positive difference for patients. Kevin's achievements have earned him recognition as one of the country's key healthcare leaders. In 2014, he won the Richard L. Clark Board of Directors Award from the Healthcare Financial Management Association, HFMA's highest individual achievement award. And for each of the past 10 straight years, he's been voted one of modern healthcare's 100 most influential people in healthcare. Kevin serves on many professional organizations boards including the Catholic Health Association Gilead Sciences. In 2007, he served as chairman of the American Hospital Association, using his influence to raise awareness of and encourage action toward eliminating disparities in care in all healthcare organizations. He also served as national president of the National Association of Health Services Executives from 1995 to 1997. Kevin graduated from Georgia State University with a master's degree in health administration, and he earned a Bachelor of Science from Boston University. Board certified in healthcare management as an ACHE fellow since 1993, Kevin received the Service Award in 2013 
served on the Council of Regents from 1995 to 1998. And in 1993, he earned ACHE's Robert S. Hudgens Memorial Award for Young Healthcare Executive of the Year. For his dedication to advancing healthcare excellence and commitment to service for his community, the Board of Governors of the American College of Healthcare Executives is pleased to bestow its 2015 Gold Medal Award on Kevin Lofton. Kevin? Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Chris, uh, for that uh, gracious and generous introduction. Uh, so many uh, great friends are in the audience, uh, and I appreciate uh, this opportunity to, to speak with you this morning. Uh, I'm humbled and honored uh, to be able to receive uh, the 2015 ACHE Gold Medal Award, and I want to thank um, everyone associated with the award at uh, ACHE, in particular uh, the Board of Governors, and of course, uh, our president and CEO, Deborah Bowen. Simply put, uh, this is really a, a high point of my career, and I want to thank uh, the many people that helped me throughout my career uh, to be at this point. I also want to say uh, how pleased I am to be able to accept this award. As you heard, uh, I've been a long-term member of ACHE, and with the many interactions and friendships that I've developed over the years, uh, it's really a, a great feeling to be standing up here to be recognized by my colleagues and peers. I also want to say that it's a, an, also an incredible experience for me to be sharing this opportunity with my good friend, uh, Rich Umnestock, who you'll hear about in, in just a minute. And Rich uh, and I had the opportunity to serve as chair officers at, at, at AHA. And when uh, Rich became the president of AHA, I had the opportunity to serve as his first board chair, so he's saddled with me, uh, with me for life. <laughs> I, I'd be less than honest to say that um, I could have envisioned when I began my career in the late 70s uh, that I would have had the opportunity to serve in so many different incredible ways for so many different organizations. It's a, it's a tribute to organizations like ACHE that help people like myself to develop themselves through the ongoing educational offerings. I'm living proof that with the grace of God, uh, we can achieve, uh, we can do things, we can do great things, as long as we have that faith and that we have others that we work with to accomplish serving the various communities that we serve. Everyone in this room and all of our colleagues across the country, we're really blessed to be able to serve in leadership roles in healthcare. There is no more honorable profession than to be able to have people come to us in need. They come to us when they're vulnerable. They come to us when they need healthcare services. So we have an obligation to make sure that we are keeping ourselves as up to date with the latest educational learnings that we can get from an ACHE to make sure that we're serving our communities in the best possible way. These are very challenging times as we migrate from a, a pay for volume to a pay for value, as we have to make the transition to improve the health of communities and keep people healthy. So it's incumbent upon all of us to be able to continue to have lifelong learning opportunities that are provided uh, through our, our affiliations with ACHE. We cannot and we will not accept the status quo. We know that we have to make changes, and it's best that those changes come from the leaders in healthcare as opposed to being regulated or having a people, other people tell us what we need to be doing. So I commend everyone here and all of our colleagues for helping to make that transition so that we can improve the health of the communities that we serve. There are very few moments uh, in time that I will be able to cherish, uh, like the one uh, this morning. And in closing, I would just say that, again, I wouldn't be here today 
uh, without the love of my family members, uh, all of the organizations that I've worked for that have given me great opportunities. And I have many families. Uh, I have my CHI family uh, represented. Uh, we have several of our board members here today. Uh, my Nazi family, uh, my blood family. And it's with a lot of love and support uh, that I've been able to um, have the, the kind of career that I have. In particular, I want to thank uh, my parents, my brothers, and my two children, Kevin Russell and Joanna, who put up with me through the various relocations and the long hours. At this point in time, I would like to accept this award on behalf of the more than 100,000 people who serve in our health, in our health uh, ministry at CHI, physicians, other caregivers, executive leaders, and we're doing what we can to make a difference in the communities that we serve. So again, on behalf of all of my colleagues at CHI, I accept this award and thank you uh, for your attention this morning. Thank you. Wow, you can see why Kevin was such a great choice. So now we're moving on to the, uh, another gold medal award winner, and it's my very great pleasure to introduce to you Ed Lamb, who is our chairman-elect, and he also is the division vice president for Western Division of IASIS Healthcare in South Jordan, Utah. Ed. Good morning, everyone. I won't make the mistake I did yesterday and said good, or I said good morning when it was really good afternoon. We welcome you here this morning. For many years, this 2015 Gold Medal Award winner has significantly influenced healthcare across the country with his visionary leadership, which has transformed how hospitals and health systems care for millions of people who place their trust in these critical situations. Richard Umdenstock, began his career in 1974 as the Institute Coordinator at the Hospital Association of New York State in Albany. The following year, he arrived for his first stint at the American Hospital Association in Chicago, where he worked for four years as a special assistant to the president and then as director of programs for hospital governing boards. In 1980, Rich was hired by Sacred Heart Medical Center in Spokane, Washington, as director of special projects. Two years later, he was promoted to vice president of management services. In 1983, he was awarded a Crosby Fellowship in the AHA's Health Research and Educational Trust and was given a three-year grant to serve as project director for the governing board mentor program of the trust. During this time and until 1993, Rich served as a hospital governance consultant with the firm Umdenstock and Hegman. In 1993, he was named president and CEO of Providence Services in Spokane. In 2006, Rich returned to the American Hospital Association where he was named COO and president-elect. One year later, he was named president and CEO and this year, Rich will retire after 42 years in the healthcare field. You can read about Rich's many accomplishments in your program, but here are some of the highlights. As a fierce advocate for ensuring that hospitals receive the resources they need to serve their patients and communities, Rich has been instrumental in charting a path toward building a healthcare system of the future. For example, in anticipation of the healthcare reform debate, the AHA under Rich's leadership developed a roadmap for improving healthcare in the United States. This framework, health for, excuse me, healthcare for life, better health, better healthcare, contains a set of goals and policies for creating better, safer, more efficient and affordable healthcare and a healthier America. In addition, his leadership throughout the, div the divisive political climate surrounding the Affordable Health Care Act was unparalleled. He helped to create and maintain field unity, especially around the principle of expanding health care coverage. He was also a leading force in the AHA, Health Research and Educational Trust Establishment, of the nation's largest hospital engagement network in 2012. 
Since then, hospitals in the AHA's network are estimated to have prevented more than 92,000 events of harm, with a projected cost savings of $988 million. Rich's recognition for this contribution to the field of the health care and other areas include the Baha'i Barith National Award in Healthcare in 2014, the Holy Names Award given in 2006 by Sisters of the Holy Names of Jesus and Mary, and an Honorary Doctorate of Laws degree in 2003 from Gonzaga University. His involvement in professional and community service boards is extensive. He is currently a board member of Enroll America and co-chairman of the Provider Council for the Council of Affordable Quality Healthcare, where he has served as its chairman since 2011. Rich earned a Master's of Science in Health Services Administration from State University of New York at Stony Brook and a Bachelor of Arts in, political, in Politics from Fairfield University in Connecticut. Board certified in healthcare management as an ACHE fellow since 2007, Rich served on ACHE's Leadership Advisory Committee from 1994 to 2002. For his integrity and high ethical conduct and leadership during a period of unprecedented health reform, the Board of Governors of the American College of Healthcare Executives is pleased to bestow its 2015 Gold Medal Award on Richard Umdenstock. Rich, would you please come forward to the lectern? Thank you very much, Ed, and thanks to all of you for that wonderful reception. Good morning. Uh, like Kevin said, uh, you can't stand here without being both honored and humbled. So I want to start by thanking the uh, board of the American College of Healthcare Executives and so many good friends and colleagues who lead that organization, now under Rich's leadership and, and Deb's partnership there. It's truly been an honor for me to be affiliated with the college throughout my career. And as I look back this morning, I realize that I've worked with four presidents, Deb today, uh, Tom Dolan before Deborah, Stu Westbury before Tom, and Dick Stull before Stu. So I've had a long connection to this organization in a variety of ways, and it's particularly uh, meaningful to be receiving this recognition this morning. During my uh, early consulting years, uh, I was a contract report writer for the college. And uh, those were exciting times, because alongside of Stu Westbury and Tom Dolan and Dr. Peter Weil, we developed and published three Delphi studies that asked the broad membership of the college to weigh in on the key issues of the day and to make predictions in kind of a iterative process uh, to make predictions about where the uh, issues were going to go, where the trends and issues were take us into the future. And those were uh, particularly exciting projects. Uh, not only did it boost my knowledge early in my career of those issues and of the leaders that we were asking to weigh in, but it was also particularly important because I had a wife, four kids, and no clients. It's a bad business model. <laughs> and the college uh, uh, was there. I think uh, Barb and I, and my wife Barb is with me today, and I share this award with her. We should have framed those dollars like they do at the pub and the barber shop. They really uh, came through at an important moment in our lives. And obviously, never did I expect, uh, as a contract writer, to be a gold medal recipient. ACHE is a gift to our field. When you think about the challenges we face, uh, national health policy challenges and challenges in the court of public opinion, when you cast about back home, sometimes as a very lonely leader, wondering how you're going to keep up, how you could possibly continue to learn enough to meet the needs and expectations of your patients and communities, 
And when you try to continue to grow as a professional yourself, but also have responsibility for others in their growth and development, I think you quickly realize that ACAG is the answer. This college has pioneered uh, distance learning to electronic learning and everything in between. It's always provided a great professional network for me uh, nationally and now in the last five or six years uh, it's brought things even closer to home uh, in local networking through uh, the development of the chapters. Uh, these are all incredibly important opportunities that we need on our journey toward professional growth and development. The depth, the breadth, the richness of the ACAG educational experience uh, is a gift. And I know by your presence here today in such significant numbers, you realize that. But what you also, I hope, realize is that it's about us. It's about you. It's about all of us contributing to this educational process, sharing with one another, learning from one another that makes this college so uh, incredibly resourceful and important in our professional lives. So in closing, I want to thank ACHE for being there for me. I want to thank each of you for being here for each other today. And in my role as president and CEO of the American Hospital Association, I want to thank the college for just an incredible partnership in which together we're here for the field. And lastly, I want to say that I'm humbled to stand among now the other recipients of the ACHE Gold Medal Award, many of whom I've known and worked with and admired throughout my career. And I want to return the favor and thank my good friend and colleague, Kevin Lofton. It's an honor to stand next to him uh, this morning. And as he said, uh, he was my first board chairman back in 2007. So congratulations, Mr. Chairman. And thank you all very, very much. Wow, aren't we lucky to have such incredible leaders among us? Let's uh, give both Kevin and Rich another round of applause. You can see how well-deserved those honors are for two great leaders. Another great leader, Rich Cordova, and it's now my uh, pleasure to introduce to you our new chairman, Richard Cordova. Let me tell you a little bit about Rich, for those of you who don't know much about him. He has served in his current position since 2006. He's the CEO of Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. Some of his coworkers are here today. He has served in his position there, as I mentioned, in 2006. From 2005 to 2006, he was president and COO of Children's Hospital. Prior to that, Rich was president of the Southern California region of the Kaiser Permanente Health and Hospitals from 2002 to 2004. And he served as COO for Southern California Kaiser from 1999 to 2002. Board certified in healthcare management as an ACHE fellow. Rich served as an ACHE governor from 2011 to 2014, as well as numerous other ACHE committees. He's also been a past chair of the Institute for Diversity and Health Management, which ACHE helped co-found. Rich received his master's degree in business administration from Gra Grazadio School of Business and Management at Pepperdine University. He received a bachelor's degree in business administration from California State University in Los Angeles. I am very, very pleased to introduce to you our 2015-2016 Chairman Richard Cardova. Thank you, Deborah. You know, when you're sitting in the front row, you see one person, then you stand up here, you see all of you. It's quite amazing. And, and good morning, everybody. Um, I'm hoping that um, 
this will be a great start for, a, for a, a week in Congress. As I was preparing my talk this morning, I thought about all the talented people. You saw some of them today, uh, this morning, who have come before me. And I came across this quote that I wanted to share with you right off the bat. <clears throat> and it's, leaders don't create followers. They create more leaders. And that's what Congress is all about. It's all about you participating in all the classes, networking, and all the opportunities to meet people. Who knows, you're going to meet your next boss. You could meet your next mentor. Some of you may even meet your next spouse. It happens. <laughs> Don't get carried away, though. <laughs> so that's the essence of what Congress is all about. <clears throat> Through these educational sessions, you get to network and, and learn about all the programs that both Ken and Richard have already explained. I want to thank both, uh, both Ken and, and recognize them. You guys are giants in the industry and really appreciate your leadership. And I want to mention a little bit more later. So congratulations to both of you. You're very deserving of this award. While we help to build better leaders, we endeavor to look past the same old spheres that we find them. With our new president and CEO, Deborah, who brings a lot of energy to the Board of Governors, and we have a very active Board of Governors, we've developed a new strategic plan. A lot of it was shared in the video with you this morning. And we've rededicated ourselves to enhancing diversity in our membership as a strategic priority. In fact, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that I'm a diversity selectionist chair. Yes, I'm the first male to serve as chair in over three years. <laughs> We're making our comeback. <laughs> Actually, um, it was a pleasure. What I really wanted to do was to recognize Gail Capazola, Di Smalley, Christine Candio. They all served with distinction, and it was a pleasure to serve with you on, this, on the Board of Governors. And they were there at a very, very point in history of the college. And sure enough, it took women to take the transition and make it happen. Yes. I also want to take some time to recognize and thank a few special people. During your career, you meet a lot of people as you move from job to job. You make friends. You move to the next job. You leave some behind. You take some with you. Uh, and you develop new relationships in your new position. <clears throat> but there's one, one group that stays with you throughout your journey, and that's your family. Your family stays with you. And I want to recognize my beautiful wife, Janice, of 40 years, who unfortunately, under doctor's orders, couldn't be here today. But I do have my three daughters here. And I want to thank them for all this week of support that you've given me. It's been, it's been a, a wonderful experience to have them with me throughout this, this week. I also want to thank them for um, bringing three wonderful son-in-laws finally have some guys to talk with. You know, it's, <laughs> I grew up with girls in my family, so it's been great. And I also want to thank you for five wonderful grandkids. But I'm not sure we're stopping there, right? <laughs> so we'll see. Thank you for being here. And I want to thank the, the Children's Hospital Los Angeles team for being here. You guys are great. Big support. I couldn't do this without the support of my trustees, without the support of all my colleagues at Children's Hospital. It's a wonderful culture that we have there, and it's, it's, it's good to see the support. I also want to recognize another group of our colleagues in, 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 in the college, um, and that's our military who are serving our country. It goes without saying, we thank you for your service to our country. <clears throat> For those of our colleagues who are deciding to transition to the private work uh, sector workforce, we recognize your talents and we welcome you with open arms. Most importantly, I want to acknowledge each of you. Every person sitting in this room knows that healthcare will experience a transformation in the coming years, and that in industry has to reinvent itself. I'm reminded of a quote from the mayor here in Chicago, Rahm Emanuel, who once said, never let a good crisis go to waste. <laughs> Over the past few years, it seemed that we have been focusing on what is wrong with the system of care in our country. Yes, we absolutely know we have to improve. 
and I'm convinced, as you heard earlier, that we know what we have to do. But let's all celebrate the progress that we've made. Society sees our missteps, but they also see the miracles that we perform day in and day out. I'm fortunate to see it at Children's Hospital Los Angeles every day. As an industry, our outcomes have never been better. Our research continues to make contributions to improve care and solve the origins of disease. And we're teaching the next generation of practitioners and leaders. I can recall a time in my career when hospital clinics had block appointments. This is when all the patients showed up at 9 o'clock and the doctors got to choose which ones they saw first, right? Well, that doesn't hold anymore. Today, the patient experience is a priority. And it's not because it's a competitive advantage, because it's the right thing to do. Today's society's expectations of our industry are changing. They want to provide us to provide more, do it better at lower cost. They have more information and tools available to them. They have choices. They're confused, but they have choices. The change before us is the challenge, and there's no doubt in my mind that we can deliver. We've done it before. We've seen changes over the decades that we've adapted to. DRGs, managed care, risk, nursing hour ratios that are mandated, resident and intern hour limitations, and the list goes on. So rather than see this as a crisis, I believe we're faced, we're, we're faced with an unprecedented opportunity. In an era of change, professional associations like the college can and will play a crucial role in helping healthcare leaders and their organizations adapt. I've been gratified to serve in a leadership role for ACHE and participate in the development of the new strategic plan, one that leverages the organizational strengths while adding a new focus for the future. I believe this new strategic plan will play a role in supporting your efforts to the advantage of the unique opportunities that our industry will provide to you. For example, ACHE's new strategic plan will broaden your outlook, expand your knowledge, expose to new operational models, and expand diversity and inclusion in healthcare leadership. Let me share three ways that you'll see our support to you in your job and your career success. First, we will be your trusted partner for relevant high-quality high education, networking, a credential that is the gold standard, and career planning. ACHE's tradition of providing resources and education at both the chapter and the national levels has helped thousands of leaders in their journey to success. This tradition will continue, but, will be, but with a focus on the skills that healthcare leaders need in the future. Second, we will support new leaders in our network, including clinicians, insurers, and diverse demographic-specific leadership. Future C C leaders will require expertise in physician management, health plan management, in addition to their knowledge of running a hospital. This will mean shifting our research efforts to professionals across the continuum of care, including physician executives, nurses, and health, of health plan leaders. And third, we will bring new solutions by convening thought leaders, developing solution sets and leadership competencies, supporting you in leading this change. When you consider new resources we'll all need to manage through change, it's important that we align ourselves with an association that is dedicated to helping the entire industry. And that organization continues to look for bright spots of success, and that's the American College of Healthcare Executives. Now, the college is also renewing, as I mentioned previously, its commitment to collaborators that share the passion for inclusiveness. Diverse backgrounds and thought processes of both the board level and the C-suite lead to better decision making and I'm pleased that ACHE will renew its commitment to those partners who share in this passion. They include the Asian Healthcare Leaders Association, the Institute for Diversity in Healthcare Management, the National Association for Health Services Executives, the National Forum for Latino Healthcare Executives, of which I'm proud to be one of the founding members the Rainbow Healthcare Leaders Association, one of our new associations, and of course the initiatives such as the AHA's Equity of Care, of which Rich and Kevin have brought their leadership to bear. 
it's satisfying to see our affiliated partners growing in membership, collaborating to advance the knowledge and promote the important vision that the college supports. Last year at Congress, you may have remember, and we all like to quote Tim King. He is the president of, uh, he runs the Urban Prep Academy here in Chicago. It's an all-male public charter school. And he said something in the context of his kids that if they can't see it, they can't be it. I like to switch that around to say if you can see it, you can be it. And it applies to not only a professional organization, it applies to the individual. And so we have to see it. The visionary leaders can see it. Now, as one of the members in the room that has a few gray hairs and goes back quite a few decades, I've learned a lot of, on, my, on my journey uh, through my profession. We've, um, we've all made our mistakes and we learn from those mistakes. So I've come up with my top 10 learnings I want to share with you because I only get one opportunity with such a large group to do this. So I'm going to take advantage of this time. So he's, these are my top 10. Now you have your own top 10 and, and as time goes on you'll keep adding to it. But number 10 is engage early. And this is a message for early careers. Engage early in your profession. Show your organization that you're committed to investing in yourself so that you can succeed. Number nine, this is the influence of the college. Be a lifelong learner. Commit to learning at every stage in your career. I always say that if you're not learning more in your present job, it's probably time to move on. Number eight, everything is temporary. Not in a negative sense, but change is about. You have to embrace change and prepare yourself which leads to number eight, or excuse me, number seven, and that is be prepared to reinvent yourself. Being able to manage change is one thing, but sometimes you're faced with that fork in the road when you need to make choices about your career, and the opportunities for where this healthcare system is going is phenomenal. Be ready to reinvent yourself. Number six, be kind to your body. Physical and mental breed success in the workplace. You can't live, learn, and lead unless you're healthy. Remember, you're the role model. You set the example. Get out from behind your desk and participate. And my team made me do that. So uh, uh, we have a health, very healthy lifestyle at our hospital. Number five, you're only as good as your team. Admitting your weaknesses takes courage, but in doing so, you can surround yourself, you can surround yourself with people who complete you. I am fond of saying that I'm a mile wide and an inch deep on issues. So I hire people that are a mile deep and an inch wide. Number four, lead from your heart. If there's one thing that Children's Hospital has done to me, it's allowed me to be more inspiring and lead from my heart. Make decisions based on your values and what you hold close to you. Leading from your heart gives you the authenticity to lead and resonate, it resonates with others and moves the organization forward. Number three is culture counts. I've been fortunate to be with a number of organizations. Each one had a strategic plan and had a plan to execute on that plan, but if the culture is not aligned, it won't work. It'll eat that strategy every day of the week. Number two, family first. You've experienced career, if you've experienced career success, you may have moved Several times. We've moved 10 times in our career. And I thank my daughters for following and keeping, keeping, keeping up with us. And finally, number one, paint your own picture. As you ben, begin your career, you're likely to follow the vision of your boss or your organization. But at some point, you begin to see all the dots out there. And you begin to connect the dots. And you begin to develop your own vision for your organization. Think about the picture you want to paint for your organization. That's when the fun begins. That's when leadership really kicks in. Some of these lessons, like the ones about family and be kind to your body, you have to learn on your own. But for many others, you can avoid the missteps of your healthcare journey by relying on the American College of Healthcare Executives to help you. You belong to one of the preeminent professional societies that exist for healthcare executives. Together, I know we can make a difference in our profession for our patients and for the communities we serve. And it is a pleasure and an honor to serve as your chairman for this year, and I thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great Congress.